Yeah. You know what this is? <laughs> it's not a movement, it's the only thing moving, huh? Dig that? Huh. Okay, okay, oh yes, the war is coming. The gap keep going with the wealthy and the slumming. So I use my mental riches for digits to keep them running till my chips come around. Yup, yeah, like a funyun. Bite down, get a taste of that Midwest flavor. While I'm at it, let Mr. Rogers just shout out to my neighbors. I ain't mention the journal when I say wake up your paper. Not talking about Kobe when they mention a great lake. Uh -huh. Listen, y'all. Uh, it's been a it's been a rough week for hip hop, but we here. And I, and I I gotta bring some I gotta bring some energy back to the room. So this this what this what I'm on today. I don't understand it. Tell me how could you be so low? Man, back 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 to the art of the battle, to the art of the battle. Back when back when it was sweet in hip hop. <laughs> Man, I, ne I never even heard that verse. You never before. heard that That's verse before. Yeah, 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 no. yeah. I bet I bet a lot of our listeners have haven't. But I got I I, I got I got to give our brother some props this week, man. Hold on a second. Yeah. You know the I think people forgot, man. So I had to, I had to, I had to remind them. It was, it was, it was a lot of talk, a lot of talk this week, Navelle. <laughs> yeah, it but, been, it's been a lot of talk this week for sure, for sure, for sure. But listeners, we back with another episode of Unlabeled the Podcast. I got my good brother Navelle Veracosha in the building. When we have certain conversations on this on this podcast, I like to have people that can quantify and who can speak to the, speak to the topics. My brother here is a recording artist. A uh, 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 hip hop aficionado, uh, uh, formerly signed to Empire, uh, has has done music with uh, A Rap. Uh, man, been produced by some of the best in the game, man. So uh, millions of streams on Spotify. So I, I brought my brother in here so we can have this hip hop conversation, ladies and gentlemen. This is my good brother Navelle Veracosha. How you doing this this evening, my brother? Man, that was that was such an intro, man. I appreciate it, though, man. I'm doing good, man. I'm I'm here. I'm ready to chop it up about this uh, J. Cole and Kendrick situation for yes. sure, for sure. Yes, yes, sir. But so I'm about to. Uh, I got somebody else that we want to tap in. Uh, let me get him on the line, and while I do, let's take a a, a, a brief a, a brief intermission. <laughs> Okay, we back. We back off this information in the mission. I got I'm a, I got my good brother, my brother of a brother Q Q in the building. How you yes, How you sir. feeling this evening, brother? Man, feeling good, feeling good, blessed as always. Yes, sir. So we, we yeah, like I said, we gonna we gonna we came here to have this conversation about this hip hop conversation, man. Uh, it's been it's been a long a long long weekend hip hop. Uh, I guess we're gonna start with the apology because because after my last show we haven't been back since the apology. So initially, how did y'all feel? with the apology like let's speak to the apology how did y'all feel about the apology first shit i i felt like he i felt like he made made his move man j j cole a real introspective person man so i think he he made that decision uh based off of internal conversation man and uh i i i don't have any problems with it to be honest i know a lot of people got kicked up some dust about it but i don't really got no problem with it man he he's a all star, you know what I'm saying? He's a hall of famer in this hip hop shit. So really, he didn't already did his number. You just played the verses. You yeah. just played two verses, two mm -hmm. cold ass verses from him. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We can't say that he never said it. Mm -hmm. So he said he spoke his piece already. Right, right, right. Q, how did you feel as a as a as a hip hop fan? And how did you feel? Uh, I feel like he made the right decision. All right, just honestly. Just looking back on things that he said in the past, mm -hmm. you kind of already knew this was coming, mm -hmm. you know. And then he told us up front on stage when he said it, he was like, man, I didn't even feel this by it, you know. And then I gave y'all a lackluster performance because I didn't even really, I didn't even really want to do it. Right, right, right. And I didn't feel that in my heart. So, like, why am I going to waste time responding to somebody that I don't even feel uh, the need to respond to? Because that's a brother of mine. We don't work together. Like, he don't want to listen to the noise. Mm -hmm. He don't want that negativity keep, especially not to move through him. You know, he's already spoke about some of the negativity in hip hop. Mm -hmm. And you know how sometimes people will try to, uh, the field, so to speak, will try to elevate some like real minimal disagreements into some nasty beef. Mm -hmm. I think exactly. he did what he was supposed to. You know what I'm saying? You know, he spoke his piece and I heard it very loud. Yeah. I, I'm gonna tell you, man. I was hurt as a hip hop fan. Like when I, cause 
I, like I didn't, I didn't, I didn't think about it this introspectively when I when I first heard it, right? So when 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 Kendra came on like that, and and I feel like Jake Cole just happened to catch some strays because he was standing next to Drake, right? So I, like when I first heard it, I was like Drake, I was like Drake and J. Cole is gonna have to respond, and then J. Cole released "I Might Delete Later," and then he tacked that 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 diss track on there. Was really was like a, a bringing a pillow fight, uh, having a pillow fight when somebody brought guns <laughs> guns outside. You know what I mean? That's what I felt. Right. I felt like it was a, I felt yeah, like it was a, a light tap, right? Uh, then then uh, I was like, okay, so they, I was like, it's gonna it's gonna be some a good back and forth. That's what I was thinking to myself. Then, then before, but like I said, again, still Drake still hadn't responded yet because I I forgot the really the real name on the bullets was going heading towards Drake. This is like the third or fourth time that Ken, that Kendrick has came for Drake's head, and still we still ain't got no response from him yet. You know what I mean? So, like I said, the hip hop fan of me wanted to hear a good back and forth. But then when I sat back and thought about it and, and thought about it, like yeah, he this is this is his brother. For the, for y'all who don't know, I think I gave a brief history on the last episode of this show. But for y'all who do not know, J Rock. And, and J. Cole were on the same freshman cover of Double XL. They, they, that's where J. Cole and Kendrick initially met. J. Cole wanted to sign Kendrick. Kendrick, uh, J. Cole produced on Section 80s for Kendrick. Kendrick and J. Cole have several songs together. DJ Khaled records, that Jeezy record that I played at the top of the uh, at the program. They've have several records together. So this, 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 and they, they have mutual friends. I, obviously, TDE was on uh, Abso. Um, What's his name? Uh, on Pi, you know what I'm talking about Neville. I might delete later. Daylight. Daylight. I'm talking about daylight. Uh, daylight. Daylight. Yeah. Daylight. daylight. These are all yeah. TDE artists. They were on. Mm-hmm. The, the, you know what I mean? That were on it. So they got mutual acquaintance. Schoolboy Q even came out at the Dreamville Festival after the apology. So, oh, he did last week. Yeah, he came out after the apology. So, oh, like huh. I said, it, you know, to me, like I said, it's. it's uh, I'm actually don't quote me on that because I think that might be wrong. I just know he oh. tweeted about it. Um, but like I said, so so obviously it's it's some relationships like Neville said in, in, intertwined in this thing. Uh, uh, like I said, I want to see a good back and forth the hip hop fan and me, man. But I don't I don't think any lesser J Cole for this apology after after a week a week's time that went by. I don't think any lesser this man uh, uh, after that apology because this was the, this was the right thing to do. Um, also, I don't know if y'all are aware, did y'all peep that? The Dreamville Fest, all the contractors were subcontract. They were all black contractors. The people that helped with the, uh, with the Dreamville Fest. Did y'all see that? Nah, I ain't, even, I ain't even really see too much on it, other than the apology. But that's dope. Yeah, and, and that's uh, real. That's real on uh, community empowerment. And did, did he do it in Fayetteville again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's that's big. That he's bringing that type of revenue and um, you know stimulus package to the area because i've been to fayetteville and it ain't it ain't nothing going on out there for real so that's that's major yeah i've never stepped foot so you can speak to that a little bit more and and, and how that has empowered the community yeah it's 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 big it's big to uh take an area like that that's the sticks and, and and bring that type of festival so many vendors like you said even the uh, contractors that are working the event are going to be able to uh provide for their family based off of this this opportunity that he's presented. So I give him big kudos to that. But my question to you mm-hmm. and to everybody else is like, say they were to go back and forth, what is the expectation? Because they already have a track record of going back and forth through the verses. So what what is the expectation? Because I have an idea of how it goes. You know, I, I feel like you're only gonna get one or two rounds of talking about verses and rap skill before people start digging a little bit deeper into family, life you know uh personal shit i feel like that's what everybody want to hear you know that the average consumer i'm not talking about the person like yourself or like us who actually um care about both kendrick and cole as people Mm -hmm. but i feel like the the loudest voice in the room is the media outlets the the disgruntled fans and stuff and i want to know what is their expectation for for the the back and forth what does that look like or what does that sound like content wise you got yeah. you got any insight on this before I go? Oh man, this this look, man. There's a reason why "world star" is such an iconic phrase, man. You know, like because ignorance is always gonna catch the the like ignorance is always gonna catch the most attention. You know, so that's why people are looking for that type of stuff, um, because it's entertaining, man. I I, I look at it like going back, like entertainers are the equivalent of what were they called in, in, in Rome in the Coliseum? Gladiator sports. 
Gladiators. It's, it's, it's the same thing as gladiator sports, man. They they would rather see people rip each other apart because it's more entertaining than having people sit down and have a conversation about something's real or going at it a couple times and calling the beef off. You know, there's a reason for that. And uh, I think I think Sasha hit it on the head, man. Like, Neville hit it on the head for sure. Um, that's always going to be the loudest voice in the room for sure. So I think that he was smart and being able to identify that up front and not let it go that far. Even though they got history, yeah. Um, I, I'm I'm with you on the gladi- the gladiator gladiator sport, but you know, like hit, like at the essence of hip hop is battling. Like DJs used to battle in the park and see who can scratch and 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 all this stuff the best way. You know what I mean? MC that like battle rap is a real thing. The back and forth from battle rap. Uh, we don't. We, I, I think. I think the the, the casual consumer judges judges it with that optics and want to see the messy stuff. Me, I I just felt like this kind of reinvigorated hip hop. Hip hop has been trash for the last four or five years. You know what I mean? Outside of J Cole, all we've been talking about is J Cole for the last J Cole and Drake for the last like three or four years. You know what I mean? Um, Kendrick has been in the mix a little bit, but I, I, a lot of people feel like his last line was uh, was lackluster. I don't, uh, but I'm not a casual hip hop fan. I, you know what I mean? And I don't go to music just to shake my ass or dance. Uh, 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 but yeah. um, but uh, the the main talk has been around them. What I was expecting to see was just a good back and forth. Um, it didn't have to get too personal. Uh, I've sp- I've spoken on times where Jay Z and Nas went back and forth. It got super messy with them brothers. Uh, luckily, Jay Z apologized and all that. But it um, but it didn't. It, it, at the end of the day, they realized how much they respected each other, and they came back years later and done, and done collaboration work. And I would have seen, like, loved to see that from J. Cole and uh, and Kendrick. I don't think it would have had to lead to no super disrespectful stuff. Just a, a a battle of who who could who could lay the best verse. Of course, you gotta you gotta tap them up a little bit. But I don't think Kendrick said too much malice. Like he came even to like that verse. It's just a hard verse. But when he started it off, he started off respect, respectfully. He said. He said, I'm way too paranoid for a threat. I hope y'all sent sentiments is symbolic. And then he just tapped him up a little bit. It's a 50 second verse. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't, it wasn't, yeah, but, oh, yeah. but, but responsibly. You know, you what? Is, you went, oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, nah, I was going to say responsibly as a as an artist, you got to have the foresight to know it's going to go deeper than that. And I think that's kind of what we heard with J. Cole because he, and, and going back to uh, Meek Mill and Drake, it's like, every, what did everybody say? Meek Mill didn't even sound like Meek Mill when he responded. Like, like they said, he yelled on every song. He he yelled on every song prior. Sounded like the biggest, angriest dude on every song. And then as soon as it was time to reply to Drake, he sounded like he had a long thought. What am I going to sound like? What am I going to say? And um, I think as an artist, you're just going to naturally think, what can I say that hasn't been said already? They done already said, uh, I'm way too paranoid for a threat. You know, he didn't already said that. So next time he going to have to say something that he hasn't said already. And that's that's when you push it. And I feel like in general, hip hop beef is like it's like being in a blender. Whoever like or like Quinn said, a Roman Coliseum. Mm-hmm. People are going to push the artist closer and closer to the blade. Every every time the media outlets make a post and say, oh, J. Cole didn't respond or, or was this weak? Was this lame? Mm-hmm. When they rating these verses, is really pushing the artist closer to the blade. And we've seen time and time again, these artists get chewed up by the blender. You know what I'm saying? Chewed up and split out. Yeah. They're going to throw two more artists in there and, and, and repeat the cycle. And I, I think that, I think what Jay-Z did, I mean, what J. Cole did, kind of like switched it up a little bit. So I'm, I'm curious to see where to go from here because it's still going. I mean, we're talking about it right now. It's still an ongoing situation, but I wonder where they're going to take it from here as as opposed to just, you know, escalating. This man, he knows the formula, though, and he refused to fall victim to press manipulation. And that's what I come in, you know, because that's the press I mean. do this with everybody. Mm-hmm. The press do this with everybody. They're doing it with Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese. They doing it with South Carolina and Iowa. They doing it with all the quarterbacks. They doing it with uh man, social media personalities. You know, folks who do podcasts like what we doing right now. They take the, mm-hmm. the 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 best of the best of both worlds and try to pit them against each other. These folks don't know each other. Ain't worried about each other. They try to do it. So you know, I'm you know that's something that I commend him for being able to see mm-hmm. ahead of hand. Mm-hmm. But. You know, what What was it, like, eight years ago, that meme that was circling around all over the place? Where it's like, hey, you get a homeless-looking Kendrick and a homeless-looking J. Cole, you about to get fired? Right, right. <laughs> like, 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 hey, that wasn't the case this time. Mm-hmm. You know, we did not have homeless Kendrick. We ain't have homeless J. Cole. So whatever bars people was looking for, 
it wasn't going to happen anyway. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. So so how do you? Because a lot of people are. I was. I, I I even had the sentiment like, man, this is career suicide for J Cole. Uh, like that was my first thought when I seen this. Like, bro, it ain't no coming back from this. I feel like if he would went back and forth. Him and Kendrick next album probably would have went quadruple platinum. Like you know what I mean? Because they would have d- delivered their best bodies of work to kind of bury that narrative that they either both got trash albums or they, they ain't got no classics. Because a lot of people consider J-, J Cole only having two classics, but I've seen the sentiment that he don't have any. And then most people only consider Kendrick having two, and uh, they a lot of people don't like to uh, to pin Butterfly and Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, which I don't understand because I think he got four classic albums. And hardcore Kendrick fans are argue that Section Eighties is a classic, so that's five. I just, oh yeah, yeah. I, Section Eighty was a classic. Yeah, in my opinion, it's not. But that wasn't that wasn't. I'm older, so that that music wasn't for me at the time where it came out. You know what I mean? Yeah. But but definitely, uh, Good Kid, Mad City, Damn, To Pimple Butterfly, and um and Mr. Morales and Big Steppers are all incredible albums and incredible body work to me. That's probably gonna stand the test of time. Um, I, I I tell a lot of people I think Good Kid, Mad City, and Mr. Morales the same artist. I mean, it's the same albums, just from two different perspectives. One is from a teenage uh, young man trying to find like like going through the coming to age story and the other one is a th- uh, a 30 plus year old man with a family uh, ref- uh reflecting on things you know what i mean so mm-hmm. uh i love both bodies of work don't get me wrong uh i, I like so i'm a huge j cole fan a huge kinship fan and a drake fan i'm not the biggest drake fan because uh i don't think he makes the best projects but i'm still a fan of his i still like his works when it's good it's good you know what i mean and uh yeah. uh but anyway, uh, but back to my, my original point was uh, uh, I, I think with the back and forth, it would have helped boost the, like boost their uh, their album sales. But uh, how do y'all think J. Cole comes back from this? I, with the, I with, think with, what, with, the, with the sentiment of my original point, I'm sorry, was that his, it, it, this was like career suicide. But how do y'all think he can bounce back from this? Oh, I, I absolutely agree, man. It's kind of uh, sad that uh, – I feel like no matter what he does on his next album, it could be his most poignant album to date, but people will still forever bring up this moment right here. And, uh, you know, he could drop the, the, the hardest, hardest, most quality, melody driven, you know, diverse piece of work he's ever had. But I feel like the, the typical hip hop uh, fan is going to reference back to this situation and say well well you ain't do that last year when Kendrick was trying to get at you you know what I'm saying and that's unfortunate for him but I think what would be best for both of them is to feature each other on each other's albums man I was just about to say that I was trying to see if you was gonna get there yeah yeah yeah. I, 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 I think if they do a joint project that would that would speak volumes to the maturity in his apology and the maturity in uh in everything he said I think that would speak volumes if they did a joint album absolutely why 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 not you I ain't hearing none of that. I think <laughs> I think there's something to it. I think there's something to it. I think Cole know exactly what he's doing. Mm-hmm. That man, that man about to step away from music altogether. He about to go start being he gonna be a graduate assistant coach at Winston Salem State or something. He about to go, <laughs> he gonna he gonna focus on ball mm-hmm. and whatever else he gonna focus on. But I don't think you know, he may not I'm not saying that that's what I think he's gonna do, but I'm saying he may not want it no more. Yeah. So and I, ain't nobody talking about that. Yeah, I, I, I've heard, I've heard the sentiment that this that he's probably going to retire soon, because um, uh, because because from I don't I don't I'm not his accountant, or, but I, from what I hear, he's up up. So uh, retirement mm-hmm. is definitely on the table. Uh, uh, excuse me, uh, but I, but I do believe his uh, his legacy uh, will be affected if if he don't do something in the form of uh, um, uh, musically. You know what I mean? And we saw yeah. Jay Z required Jay Z retired twice. I mean, ah, I can't even talk. Jay Z retired twice. Um, he he was he was he retired at volume three, and he retired with the black album, and he's still making music to this day. So I, so when you when you are artist and it's in you and you at the level of them, because uh, J Cole was definitely one of them. Regardless of how we feel about the apology, he's still one of them. His catalog speaks for itself, all the way back That's to true. his all the way back to his mixtapes. Um, so. I, I think some musically is not it's, it's not off the table, but honestly, I think if it for them to come back, they're gonna have to do something together. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree with that, man. That don't you know whatever he does, it don't take away from his body of work. You know, that's just like it's kind of like certain people once they get to a certain level, it really you really can't take away from their accomplishments, and you really can't say one person is better than the other. It's like pick your poison, you know. Mm-hmm. It's like choosing between like like Kobe, LeBron, and Jordan. 
and and wilt. It's like, well, you choose who you want, but you ain't gonna say any one of them better than the other. Right. They just at a level that it is what it is. Yeah. You, you can't stop none of them. So that's where I feel like Cole and Kendrick are. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, at this point, and it's like, man, who 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 cares if if it kills his career and he step off? Mm -hmm. You you know, that's like that's like Jesus caring that you killed him. Yeah. You coming back? Nah, I, I <laughs> you disagree. You know what I'm saying? I disagree to a certain extent because when you look at the entertainment industry, it's one of those it's one of those industries where like I saw I saw a video the other day. Um what's his name? Keith Murray, homeless. You know what I'm saying? He out there in the streets drinking homeless. It's like it, it's unfortunate that the legacy being hurt will affect these artists 10 and 20 years down the road. Sometimes I'm not saying in particular J. Cole's situation would be like that, but I'm saying like, yeah, it could hurt his legacy and that, and it shouldn't. That's why we, we we're holding this conversation because we got to address, like I keep hearing people referring back to the uh, beef between Biggie and, and Tupac. I'm mm -hmm. um, talking about this is the biggest. These are the two biggest artists that we had going head to head on some hip hop shit since two, Tupac and Biggie. But look how that ended up. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know, I know where you you feel like it'll never go to that point. But yeah, I definitely don't. <laughs> nah, but it's still something to be looked at. Cause, cause why would you even? Why would you even compare the two? Why would you compare this situation to that situation and not note that both of those artists met their untimely demise and then probably sold more after they died? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Oh, definitely, like, definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know, we, man. I, I I don't know because it's like I keep hearing this. I keep hearing the comparison between Pac and Big, and I mean, yeah, noted. But you know, there's been a lot. There's been a lot more, not more in like its totality, but a lot more like in total number, uh, hip hop beats. Maybe not of the same caliber, but close throughout history, man, and and everybody's still good, man, you know, not to take anything away from Keith Murray, but it's like, man, really, you, Keith, Keith Murray and Cole, I don't necessarily know that that's supposed, that that's supposed to be comparable, but if you look back at beef and people falling off after a beef, mm -hmm. bruh, well, 50 and Ja Rule, yeah. they was the two biggest artists on the planet. Mm -hmm. the, the, on, at the time, yeah, the but, only but, person but saying, on a global I'm stage saying, was, was, was DMX. Yeah, but but look at what happened to Ja Rule, bro. Ja Rule fell way farther down than he should have fell. 100%. And I feel like that hip hop is one of those industries where it's depth for sure gonna happen. You know, actors yeah, and actors. Is everything in hip hop for sure. Yeah, yeah. And ja, ja Rule was in a financial crisis behind what happened with Fifty Cent, but everybody know Ja Rule made hits. Ja Rule was the hit master. Right, you know what I'm saying. Right. Ninety nine, two thousand, two thousand and one. Ja Rule was slinging them joints out well, like nobody's business. Well, what I will tell you about that time frame, <laughs> about that time frame, because I was, I'm old. I know, I know y'all was old enough to remember as well. But Ja Rule was quite annoying to quite a few people at that point in his life. Oh, he was, yeah, he, was. he was cranking out too many hits at a, such a high rate that every time one of his songs came on, you just got annoyed. So, and it was all radio smashes, but you just got annoyed yeah. after hearing it for for four weeks straight. You know what nah, I mean? That's just because so, he was yeah. yelling. On every track, <laughs> 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 yeah, yelling on every track. No, it was the bad singing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I, I argue, I argue that Ja Rule had a beautiful. Uh, I just. I just swallow broken glass voice. <laughs> <laughs> I just swallow broken glass. Yeah. <laughs> what up, what up, what up, what up, what up. Yeah, yeah, man. It was, it was, it was, yeah. it was. Nah, a, but it you know, obnoxious. it's another point that I wanted to bring up too. Uh, I seen today that Fifty Cent was ordered to pay seven million to uh, Rick Ross baby mama because of the the whole you know beef that right. that Fifty Cent and Rick Ross went through, which everybody say. Who I mean, I don't know. I don't know who y'all thought won. I've heard people say both people won that beef, or that was one of the biggest beefs. But my question yeah. is, even if you did reach your goal by publicly embarrassing him, by having his baby mama come on, this is 50, sit beside you, he released a whole sex tape from her. When you know you're going to have to circle back and pay $7 million in 20 years, is it worth it? And I think that's where J. Cole and Kendrick, now J. Cole had the foresight to say, it's not worth it right now. In 2024, it's not worth it. I don't need to see uh, 10, 15 years from now because I guarantee you 50 Cent ain't think he was going to have to pay $7 million in 20 years. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 100% wasn't worth it. Uh I like like I, I think they both stepped away from that beef. Uh it was it was stupid. Uh I think Rick Ross career took a, a slight hit 
because that took away some of the validity validity in his verses and it kind of uh, uh, lifted that veil where people was like, oh, he ain't he ain't actually this big drug lord from Miami. You know what I mean? Because um, I think a lot of people thought his persona was real. Um, yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, I would say Brick Ross did take a hit from that, and Fifty now looking looking like said fast forward into the future. I definitely think Fifty took a hit from that as well. Yeah, not worth it. Not worth it at all. Um, and and I know y'all made a point about Keith Murray, but man, Keith Murray had a illustrious career back in the day with EPMD and all he that. He did. Yeah. So mm-hmm. so, I, so so I like like it, of course it wasn't no internet back then, but I used to love Keith Murray back in the day. So I, and I, I, I remember I yeah. remember his I remember his little run, man. Yeah. Large run. I ain't gonna call it little run. No disrespect. Right. Right. Yeah. You know? Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, he was. Run. He was. He was definitely hit for real. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's it's sad to see him like that, man. Uh, people people publicly embarrassing him. Um, they caught him out in the street drinking. He had an open bottle of alcohol in the street, and people literally laughing at him, rolling their car windows down and filming, putting it out, putting it out. One woman caught him outside, looked like a twenty dollar motel, and she said, "Hey, you want twenty dollars? Rap, rap right now." But I'm saying that's the result of a legacy not being protected. Because even if he doesn't have the money, he should still have the respect. J. Cole shouldn't lose his respect based off whether he replied to Kendrick or not because he already put so much work in. That's what I'm trying to get at, mm. you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, t- I, I totally agree with that. Yeah. And like I said, a, a knee-jerk reaction, I was like, man, this is hip-hop, man. Go back at this dude, man. Get out of get at him. Like, and it was only because he released a diss. If he if he just not had responded at all and just kind of let it like drift off, I probably wouldn't have felt that same way. But it was because he dissed him first. You know what I mean? Like like he actually got in the ring and threw a punch. It wasn't like he didn't do nothing. So like like me initially, that was my knee jerk reaction. But now that the the dust is settled, I'm kind of looking at this in a grown up, more mature manner. But one thing I will say, and this is I want to address it earlier when we were talking about people comparing this to Biggie and uh, Tupac. This ain't even in the same vein. And I and I know a lot of people. Like like a lot of a lot of women were like, why y'all mad at the brother? Because he wanna he uh, he apologized and stuff like that. Because it's hip hop. That is an that is a art form in battling is an art form inside of hip hop. But if for all you for all you casualists that don't understand, beef has always been prevalent. I wouldn't even call it beef, but battling has always been prevalent in hip hop. So like I said, it's a gladiator sport. It's just like like bro, Michael Jordan is gonna be on that court, but but Iverson is gonna show up with that crossover at some point. It's a, it's it's competitive in its nature. You know what I mean? So, so that, maybe 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 I got my history wrong. Not to cut you off, but uh-huh. I thought battling came about in hip hop, like in the in in like mid to late eighties. Nah, you uh-huh. know what I'm saying. So 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 because go ahead, go ahead. I thought the origin of hip hop was like uh was like in the in the sixties and seventies, like like with parties. You know what I'm saying? They used to have to get voice jockeys to to uh take the mic over break beats. Just uh-huh. to keep people dancing, so the party wouldn't die down. Right. So, so yeah, that that was that was a part of it. Yeah. It's but a, 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 then came DJ battles, where DJs would battle like scratching off with uh, with each other and stuff like that. So battling in its essence has always been in there. Then you had the, uh, I think, I do not want to. Don't misquote me, but I believe the Sugar Hill Gang had a back and forth with somebody back in the day. But it was all about lyrics, though. It wasn't like I'm gonna talk directly to you. It was just about the lyrics yeah. that I'm spitting. They yeah. were face. They were face to face with each other. That's Big Daddy a- Kane, yeah. Uh, yeah. going yeah. at Slick Rick. They will yeah. walk down to the same park and and stand ten inches from each other and and, and compete. Right. Yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't like they was like like shitting on each other like we see like disrespecting each other but the, so it was yeah. just battling i'm gonna say my verse you say your verse we seen right. we seen big l uh uh jay-z i think a uh, big pun was there as well like we seen them battle it's just about the best verse they weren't sitting there disrespecting each other blatantly in their face it's just about who could say the best verse and then on fe- yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then on features like like Jay Z and Biggie had, I love the dough. You can tell that that that, that elevated that song, the, just the competition, and they and they respected each other pen because they was going yeah, crazy on that song. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it's always been a part of the battle, the competition. Like you know what I'm saying? So that's what I, that's what I'm speaking more to. Like for the casual listeners out there, this is not this is not. Uh, um, it wouldn't. I, I don't think these brothers they too respectful, they too conscious. I don't think these this would have ever got to a level of like super disrespect uh, to the point where somebody could have died. It, it p- could have possibly will, but I, I don't think it would have ever got there. And one thing that I also want to uh, say is in our, we very, very sensitive to violence in our culture. Violence is a means to an end in a lot of cultures, like war, violence, all that. I hate the fact that we as black Americans, African Americans, whatever you want to call us, we act like 
we cannot be a part of violence or some se- or, or everything is going to lead to that. Not everything is going to lead to that. You know what I mean? And that's and that's that's that, yeah. that, that talking point right there frustrates the hell out of me. Like violence, violence is always going to be prevalent as long it, in nature, in humanity, whatever. It's always going to be prevalent. So I don't know why we as Black Americans act like we got to be so conscious about every instance of some kind of competitiveness leading to violence. I hate that. It kind of it, it drives me a little bit uh, crazy. But I don't know if any of y'all brothers have any feelings or thoughts about what I just said, but. Yeah, nah, you I, that, I, I, I can touch on that, man. I think we have to, especially inside the music industry, because the music industry is fueled by violence. You know what I'm saying? Like I've been I've been in meetings before with with uh, top record executives that's telling me to make violent music flat out, not roundabout, but flat out. Dude told me, I want you to make music that make people come outside the club at 3 a.m. and rip each other apart. That he told me that. You know what I'm saying? And and this is what sells more, but it's also like it's a real physical toll that it takes on our community. And I've seen it like so many artists are here and gone. If they, man, when you sit there and watch the tributes, when you watch the tribute reel, you know, when we was coming up, well, I know you're a little bit, uh, you are, you're a generation ahead, ahead of me, but man. It, when we were young, it would be short reel of the artists that done passed on. It'd be a little short reel. Now, man, you sit there, they get this playing that reel of the RIPs, man. It, you'll be sitting there for 10 minutes straight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's you know? just the cats that left that year. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. In the last two, three years, man, yeah. we start with Pop Smoke. It's probably 30 rappers done died since then. Yeah. Quick question, though. So who so who was at fault for that? Because we don't own hip hop, so to speak. So is it the people that are trying to take these young impressionable kids and tell them to come and make this violence music? Because you said no. You had the wherewithal to keep your morality intact. But not a lot of people can afford that when they're watching their mama struggle, when they when they getting lights turned off in the crib, and they're watching roaches run across the counter, if it's that extreme. But so, a lot of people just want to get to the back. So who's at fault? Because I remember when hip-hop was – when George, like even – and, and this is why I like to argue this point, because like even with – the people that we're discussing now, Drake, Kendrick, and and uh, and, and um, Drake, Kendrick, and J. Cole, they don't make genocide music. They don't make trap music. They are conscious rappers, so to speak. Even J. Even Drake, like the stuff that he talks about, is is mostly uh, w- women stuff, dealing with relationships and all that type of stuff, or, or or somebody breaking his heart. It's not. It's not about. He's not perpetuating violence in every verse. You know what I mean? So like, we still see that consciousness still sells. But uh, but but these record execs, like we got a lot of 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 garbage trash music that doesn't have anything to do with anything so so who's who's at fault for this is the artist because because i need i i i need to know how y'all thoughts on this yeah it's the it's but it's both it's both both people are at fault they're both willing participants in my personal opinion now i got i got some skin in the game where you know i, I was sitting in that seat as an artist so i have a little bit I might have a skewed perspective. You talking about being in a position where you know you don't want to see roaches. Hey, <laughs> when me and Mike was working on our first album, shout out to Silent Mike. Man, we were sleeping on the floor with roaches. We didn't want no roaches on us neither. You know what I'm saying? I understand it's, it's there. everybody got different circumstances and some people really fighting off real demons every single day. But at the end of the day, I feel like the, in the current state of music, if these artists were presented a deal where you get everything that your heart desires, but at the end of the two years, your ass going to die, I believe 80% of people would still take it. Hmm. 80% of the artists that are trying to rap right now would still take that deal. Just like just like drug dealing. They know that you're going to end up in a casket or you're going to go to jail. It's people who are willing to take that deal because they want to bankroll right now. And I'm not making that shit up. They say it themselves. Fuck it. Live fast, die young. That's how people are making decisions out here. The record industry is searching for those people. That's that's as simple as it is. The record industry is scouring through Tallahassee, Tampa, uh, Baton Rouge, Philadelphia, Baltimore, looking for those people who want that deal. And they're going to give them everything they want. They're going to make sure the music quality sounds good and they're going to pump it. I feel like it's both both parties are willing participants to it and uh one thing I do also want to say is J. Cole and Kendrick, you don't think that there's any um you don't think that there's any correlation between all the references that Kendrick made to weapons or guns 
in that verse or, or even when when j cole on seven minute drill look at how many references he made to guns and weapons you know what i'm saying these 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 verses are way more popular than just the introspective verses that they drop where they just talking about inner reflection or things that happened when they were growing up, how they feel about childhood experiences. These verses are going skyrocketing. They're going viral. But I believe there's a correlation to them talking about doing bodily harm to another person that look like them and the response that it gets from the public and the media. Yeah, you, yeah, it might. It, 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 I, I believe it's some definitely some truth to that, but also like, like I said, with the violence thing, man. Like, no, you, you know what, bro? I, I you got this one. I, I'll give you this one. I, I ain't even get ain't even no butt to this one. I, I'll, I'll give you this one. I like. So, go ahead. I got a different. I got. I'm, I just want to add a different perspective in there. Mm -hmm. Not that you're wrong in any way. I'm yeah. not refuting what you're saying. Yeah. But I do think when when we ask the question like who's at fault just that question itself mm -hmm. is not really touching on exactly uh or how how deep rooted and how insidious and intricate this whole thing is you know what i'm saying because it's a little bit deeper than just entertainment and who's willing to take it like almost as if we can put a finger on well if nobody's willing to do it then it'll stop nah that's not how this that's not how this stuff works you know what i'm saying that's not how anything works on the planet and you the way I look at it is there's a concept of of left and right. You know what I'm saying? You can't have one without the other, right? Because because good is literally the opposite of bad. So it's a contrast, right? Mm -hmm. um, you can't have one without the other. You can't have up without down. You can't have left without right. There's always going to be something somewhere that's trying to get the worst out of anything. You see it in the church, you know? You get you'll have harvest churches where people are teaching harvest and prosperity, and then you'll get folks that want to come out and talk about the nasty things that are going on day to day because that actually is real life. But hey, that person is gonna get shut up because the church don't want to get people riled up because they're gonna say, hey, getting people riled up and possibly bringing out this violence is is wrong. That ain't what needs to happen, and somebody needs to be responsible for it, as if it's not something that is a part of what we got going on day to day, which I'm not saying that violence in our community, and obviously the black community, but just in the world in general, is not higher than it should be. I'm not saying that by any means, but what I am saying is that there is something that is always going to be driving that contrast no matter what happens, no matter who says no. People say no, we still gonna find a way to make money off of something, and people are going to tap into human nature and you have to fight. You have to fight your very being not to be emotionally connected to things that upset you. You have to. Because I can guarantee both of y'all, I don't have children, but both of y'all right now, I can guarantee you we get we we live the, the if we go and live the greatest lives ever. Both of y'all are going to find a way. If. Like if the opportunity presents itself, y'all would find a way to to come together over the fact that you have children and you would do anything. Skin somebody's head to make sure that y'all children are taken care of. I know for a fact y'all would. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And y'all can come together and have a conversation about that. It's possible that you might go out seeking that type of stuff because the emotions that you have about it will get you in a position to where you can relate to it. So you go around thinking about it. You know, you might find yourself on YouTube watching videos of an intruder going into somebody's house and, and, uh, with, yeah, with a it'll, gun. it'll kick up that man, emotion you, yeah, you. you watch this, yeah. yeah, you watch this man save his family. And it's like, it's all negativity that you consuming, but it comes from something. So how do you fix that? Well, you fix that by like life and the baseline for what life sustainment is across the board has to be in such a good place to where people don't have a need or want to relate to anything negative because it's not really a part of their life. That's the only way that you can get away from this. It's not like rappers staying away from it. Hey, don't do that. Don't take the money. It's not these companies like not getting into it. They have to have a reason to even want to tap into that type of stuff in the first place. I think it's much deeper than just. I mean, like Ice Cube said, or I don't know if it was Ice Cube or Bone Thugs brought to light that there was a meeting held in the late 80s, early 90s, when gangster music first came out in 88 with NWA. The date they, they made a deal between the major record corporations and the private prisons that said if you could drive the violence up, we can convict more people and put them in. But we're going to use the music as a, a pushing force. 
It's, it's a yeah. pushing force to, to push up the violence. So there is a catalyst. And I am agreeing with both of y'all that, you know, violence is going to exist because it's human nature. Mm -hmm. So I'm not having I'm not having a, I'm not arguing that, you know, the violence in our community is due to these outside forces that are coming into our community and influence and violence, poverty, all of these. Uh, it's all types of stuff. It's all types of stuff. The decimation of the family, all these types of things are the contributors to where the violence comes from. But what I'm saying is you got somebody like J. Cole who is literally telling you I've taken the first step towards something that I ain't even want to step towards. And he's a fucking millionaire, deca millionaire, hundred millionaire superstar. And the force is so strong that it made him baby step towards it. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm Facts. saying? Mm -hmm. He ain't no yep. person sleeping in no hood with rats. rats. Like this is a huge force that, that we talking about here and, and, it, and it's real. You know what I'm saying? Everybody don't have to wear what thought that J. Cole had. That's why I tip my hat to him to say, yo, I'm going to shut out all of the noise. I have the ability to do that. Some artists don't have the ability to do that. And they pay the price for it time and again. So that's my point. Yeah, my man. I, yeah, I agree. I'm not, I, look, like I said, I'm not saying that the onus relies on any one group. I'm just saying um, the only thing that I'm really trying to get down to is basically like, the, I feel like the, the best way to mitigate all this is like collectively life has to change across the board in America, in the world, you know? Mm -hmm. And I don't know that that's possible. Yeah, it's 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 really hard. Like but that like I said, this is why media is so important. I'm I'm a I'm a huge proponent of media being important because you can disseminate information, you can inform people and you can motivate people. So that was a a, a huge reason uh cute a mutual a mutual phone. Um right quick. Oh my bad. Yeah, no you good cuz it's it's over it's it's all good though. But uh um uh, like I said, but this is why media is important because, like I said, you can disseminate information, you can uh, you can motivate, and you can inform people. Uh, uh, and and this is what I think the black community, African American community, uh, is missing. Is I've not been having this conversation for a couple of weeks now. It's like a code of conduct because we play with each other all the time. We don't have no pride in our work. If you ever had somebody do some work for you that's of color or give you a service, it's normally lacking of pride. And and talk at, to and, and at some point we 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 were a very prideful community and we prided ourselves in the work and the things that we was doing. I've always delivered and over delivered. I have pride in everything I've done. Like my camera has looked like this from almost day one. People be like, man, how you get that setup looking like that? Because I got pride in what I do. I'm not just putting anything out there now like I, I like now i did have to start with with lesser equipment but eventually i was able to graduate to more and more equipment x y and z but i've been like this in every facet of my life anybody will tell you that you come to my crib it's always clean you you know what i'm saying all that type of stuff my car is always clean like 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 just that at that simple level how you do one thing is how you do everything and uh, like i said that we be off code a lot and i and i think that I, I don't know where to start this but i try to in my community i try to make sure that everybody aligns from a moral standpoint a pride standpoint and and that way we can build because i know if i come to Neville for something i know what i'm gonna get from him if i come to q for something i know what i'm gonna get from him so i try to align with that inside my own community and i know everybody has a network of people that they do business with but I, I i like i said i think this platform and platforms like this is to inform us to start doing better up to each other as a community you know what i mean for sure yeah so i definitely i, I definitely think con, con, like consistency and what you provide it kind of comes down to discipline man mm -hmm. and um like meaning like everybody can provide a certain level of professionalism but i think in order to do that, you have to understand that that's what comes first. So you have to be willing to cut out some of the creature comforts in your life that allow you to uh, to be comfortable because bringing the same package repeatedly all the time mm -hmm. um, so that your reputation is right. Um, and this goes back to what you were talking about with like, you know, some of our business practices, I believe you were speaking to in the black community. Mm -hmm. I think I think that's where it comes from sometimes. We, we got people that feel like they've been they've been so behind for so long that when they get in the when they get in the point almost like out of desperacy, they will focus a little bit more on what makes them feel better. And, you know, maybe maybe the idea or looking like you have it like, hey, just being able to say I'm a business owner or just be, being able to say that I'm a this or I'm a that. Mm -hmm. But you ain't even doing good at it. You qualified to do some stuff, but you ain't doing good at it. So you ain't going to be there forever. Right. You know. 
and everybody else going to pass you up. So it's right. like sometimes the discipline of being able to say like, yeah, bro, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to buy a Benz right now. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to be able to buy a $90,000 truck. I'm not going to be able to kick up with my money. I need to focus on my professionalism and what mm-hmm. I'm providing all the time. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, 20 years down the line, I will be able to kick my feet up and really live it up. Right. You know, but and, folks and, don't want to do that. And, 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 and back to what I was saying about these relationship and community building, like when you providing a service fam, like if you do bad on that service, I'm not recommending you to nobody. I've literally had people be like, man, who did that for you? And I know they did it. Nah, I wouldn't recommend it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> like, I've got, yeah. I've, I, I've gotten bad services. I mean, I've paid thousands of dollars for a service. And literally, I'll hit the person back like, hey, can you come fix this? And then they, they don't want to fix it. And then I'll just remove everything that they did. Like, I don't even want, I don't even want it. I don't care how much I pay for it. You know what I mean? Like, I, yeah. I, I just feel like, and, and, and that way, it'll keep me angry enough at you to never recommend you to business again. You know oh, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, man. And yeah. then, you know, it's a conversation that goes on on Instagram where people, I, I hear a lot of people saying, uh, your promotion don't cost nothing. An uh, Instagram story don't cost nothing. But it's like, they... They want you to share it whether it's good or bad, but that's just basically what they're saying. They're saying if it's your partner, it don't matter. You're not you're not supposed to judge whether you like the content, whether you agree with the content, whether you like the T-shirt. You're just supposed to share it because it's your friend. But I, I, I never I never quite agree with that. I do think that there is a standard that we should hold each other to. Like you said, if you if you if you got a friend who got a restaurant, but the food always cold and, you know, they serving day old food because. They don't got they uh they not managing their inventory or they not managing their restaurant the mm-hmm. way that it could and should be managed. You shouldn't post that restaurant on your Instagram story. Not at all. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's Girl, you don't. That's how I feel you don't even it. understand, man. Like so, so <laughs> I live I live my life where I don't care. I don't care. My brother can tell you I don't care who you are. You could be family. I'm talking about my immediate family. Yeah. It don't matter. I have a I have a standard of of what I live by, what I believe in. And I'm not promoting, if I don't feel like you got it, I'm not promoting you, period. I'm mm-hmm. not putting you in nothing else because mm-hmm. at the because at the end of the day, my reputation falls on that. Right. You know, mm-hmm. and it's tough for me because um, because I work in STEM. And we ain't talking about like, we ain't talking about no BS jobs. We talking about everybody out here making six figures. Mm-hmm. We all six figures, right? You know, do you know how small the black population is in science, technology, engineering, math? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I can, I can it's, imagine. It's, 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 it's very small. And mm-hmm. I want to put people on because I don't know. Every t- everywhere I've worked, I have always been the only person like me in them up. You know what I'm saying? It's mm-hmm. 97% everything else. Yeah. yeah. Or, you know, mm-hmm. uh, or mostly white, you know. Mm-hmm. So I'm not saying that any of the people that I work with are bad, but it definitely creates a hostile environment when you're working in that place and you ain't culturally, you cannot align with anybody so you have to assimilate or you're not going to get promoted right. and it may not be because you black it could just be because you um hey folks can't relate to you and you know mm-hmm. everything is about relationships yep. when people relate to you you're gonna get promoted Definitely. so i say that to say i say that to say i want to bring people on mm-hmm. i would love to bring more people on more more black brown uh asian people but folks they get they get reckless Mm-hmm. They got bad product. Yep. You know, they got a bad reputation mm-hmm. and you can't bring them on. Cause like, you know, I had somebody I wanted to bring on and he kept getting put off of jobs cause he wouldn't stop smoking. And then it's like, man, I can't help you. I can't, I can't put my name on you because I don't know that you go. Right. <laughs> you gotta know what you gotta know what you look like right now. Mm-hmm, you know mm-hmm, what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And it is, it's the age old story with us, man. I want us to be represented in everything, but you can't be represented if you don't want to be represented. And a lot of it is not relying on people to just do it off of the strength of, hey, we the same thing. I don't care who you are. I'm putting the right candidate in there. So if you were the right candidate, I'm going to put you there. Right, right. Yeah, I, yeah I'm, I'm the same way. Like, I like I used to be all that, oh, no, this is my, this is my skin folk. So I'm doing it. Nah. Now I'm now I'm about to like you said the right candidate. Kind of I don't care black, white, Asian, or in between, like whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? I'm only the only time I put. I, no, this is a conversation. This has got it. That's that's a conversation for later. This got. I was gonna go too deep right quick, and I I, 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 might, I might alienate some people. So I don't wanna, I want to do that right now. I, I, I forgot we we are doing a, we're doing the show. This is not a, a conversation between us. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but listen, look what Jake Cole done took us to do, man. Look, he, he, he's so conscious. We didn't got super conscious. We can't even talk about hip hop no more. We didn't. We yeah. just started indicting the whole black community. <laughs> hey, hey, let me just note it for the record, though. 
Man, Kendrick was gonna chew that boy up. Chew, yeah, yeah. J. Oh, yeah, Cole wasn't fucking that, with Kendrick. Kendrick, Kendrick, man, look, that dude, he an animal. When he go there, mm-hmm. he an animal, and it ain't really nobody that could really rock with him on that tip. Not at all. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, Cole I knew what was up. Yeah, yeah, he knew what was up. I like, and I think Kendrick was willing to take it somewhere that J Cole wasn't. And J- and Drake, and we won't hear nothing from Drake neither. Now, now listen, I people people, people my people in my comments on TikTok and YouTube been arguing me all day, talking about, oh, this is a great show, but Drake is gonna respond, bro. Listen, historically, Drake, who has Drake responded to? Only, I mean, only Kanye. What, what, and, well, and Kanye, Meek. Kanye, and Meek. That's it. So, like, he push the T, the the killers. He ain't responding to the killers. Kanye, yeah. Kanye, Kanye is not a killer. He not Kanye can make some. He gonna put you in the verse. He didn't tap some people up before. Quite a few people actually. Uh, um, he didn't put a, he didn't put a quite a few people in verse. But Kanye ain't no killer. He ain't no Pusha T. He ain't no Kendrick. He ain't going that for the juggler. So so yeah, he's 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 an easy target. You know what I mean? And people view Kanye a certain way. You know what I mean? And, and Look, Kendrick being ready, man. What did he say? What did yeah. he say three years ago? Yeah. Smoking on top five. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> yeah he's he been ready. Been waiting, he, 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 he been waiting for it. Say my name and you gonna promise you're going to see Candyman. He has not been playing out here. Like, he, 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 he waiting for them. Man, uh, Kendrick, man. Kendrick, one of the most prolific, man. I put him in the, in, in the new new generation. This, this new generation of the GOATs, man. I got Kendrick up there at the top. Mount Rushmore for sure. Yeah, uh, as far as like, as far as standing the test of time, the products that he put out, I don't think nobody else is gonna be able to stand the test of time like him. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, um, I, th- I, th- I really think that I really think that his 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 catalog is gonna speak for itself in 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 thirty years. Like you know what I mean? This it's almost gonna be like listening to Tupac again. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, now now Tupac didn't make the greatest music, but his conviction was was above uh, second to none. You know what I mean? So when it, whenever Tupac spoke or rapped, you believed him, regardless if the, oh, if the, sure. if the music was great or not. And that's how Kendrick is. So. Most oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm look. Let me tell you something. Kendrick, everything Kendrick dropped could have been trash. I was going everything that he dropped could have been trash, and I was gonna rock with him just off of the hard part two. The hard part two was so dope that it don't matter what else he dropped. He could have turned into Millie Vanilli. He could have been out here sounding <laughs> like Keep Sweat. Yeah. I'm still. I still would have been like, Hey, he in my top ten. Period. Yeah. I I never heard the hard part. You said part two, right? Yeah, the hard yeah, part two is overly dedicated. I'm gonna have to go back and listen to that because I, I I never heard it before. Yeah, man. Because yeah, like I said, I was, was I was a, I was a late adopter to Kendrick. Like so, that's why I said when I went back and listened to Section 80, it just wasn't for me. I really I, like I I like Good Kid, Man City, but I didn't like it at the time it released as much as everybody else did. Everybody was like, "Man, this is the greatest!" Like this is crazy. Like like everybody was going crazy over that album, and I'm like, I hear it. But I just ain't feeling it in the same vein that y'all that that everybody else did at that time. You know what I mean? Like now, which one? Like, uh, no, Good Kid, Mad City. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it it didn't it didn't ring off like that for me. Like at the time, it wasn't. It really wasn't into to Pimp Butterfly where Kendrick was on another level, and I could see his artistry and where he was trying to take his art his, his artistry. You know what I mean? And then I went back and really sat with Good Kid, Mad City for for some time. And Good Kid, Mad City, not now like. It, classic like I, I i rock with it now but at the time it would drop and everybody was riding around playing and everything on my friends i just didn't understand what the what the hype was about and i because mm-hmm. I, I remember the first time you played it for me i was in atlanta the first time you played kendrick for me and i was oh, that like, was the first time i heard it too i was in the back of your car that's yeah, crazy yeah, yeah. that was I, the first time we heard yeah, it that yeah, was when it came out yeah and i'm listening to this dude and i'm like okay he good but i mean it's nothing i nothing special about this kid that i ain't heard before and then like i said when when, when he released i and on, on to Bim, a, a butterfly and and, uh, and but and, uh, what was it? Um, the song uh, uh, where he's like, uh, "I'm the biggest hypocrite of 2016." Well, by the time I finish the statement, you'll see what I mean. What's the name of that song? Black and the Berry. Black and the Berry. Like that. Like that. That was the one for me. I was like, "Oh no, this." He, I was like, "No, he different now." I, I see what the hype is about. Um, yeah. So yeah, that that was when he he reached that pinnacle level for me to where it was like, okay, nah, he he staying in my top ten as well. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, uh, but, I like yeah, I like how he put that. Uh, and the sing about me on Good Kid, Mad City, and yeah. he followed up Keisha's song yeah. from Overly Dedicated or yeah. Section 80, one of the two. Mm-hmm. And he was like, 
you, uh, you he, he was rapping in the girl's voice and he said, uh, you put my sister's name in that song. And I thought, damn, he's talking about Keisha's song. Yeah. And, and then she started saying, I'll never fade away. I'll never fade away. I know my fate. And then her voice faded out. Yeah. That shit was crazy, yeah. man. Yeah, his artistry is, like I said, se- se- second to none. It, like, w- we ain't seen nobody been able to pivot through these lanes. Like, this man that dropped a hardcore hip hop classic, a funk classic. Back to a hardcore hip hop, like like I mean, back to a pop album, because damn was one hundred percent a pop record, like but it was still the consciousness and the uh, the confliction in this music, you know what I mean? Like like mm-hmm. it, it was just incredible, man. And uh, like I said, like yeah, he just in a different bag. <laughs> he just in a different bag. Uh, mm-hmm. J Cole killer, like I, I I'm, I'm gonna give him his props all day long, man. Like like twenty fourteen Forest Hill Drive was his first uh, classic to me. I, I like. Like uh, uh, I, I didn't feel the same way as about uh, sideline story, and uh, what was his, his second album? Uh, shoot, I can't think of with the gold like statue on the cover of it. And I'm trying to remember the. I'm trying to remember the name of it. Yeah, it was something. What was it like TLC or something like that? No, it was something. It was something, it was something I, I, weird like that. But I remember because yeah. it had a uh, it had crooked smile on it. And yeah, all that. yeah, yeah, then, yeah. Then I didn't feel the way about those albums. Everybody else did. But 2014 Forest Hill Drive was where he. Got oh, that it. was the one where it had got me up all night. Yep, yep that album. Yeah, yeah. it was you know you know no, it wasn't Unabomber. Yeah, why can't nobody think of this album? <laughs> <laughs> I'm was, about that. Hey, that's I'm a, about that says everything that. you need to know, that. right? Did it? You know. No, but I love J. Cole, though. I don't ever want it to get misconstrued of how I feel about J. Cole. I feel like both of their contributions to hip-hop and to the game. And, by the way, I heard that uh, that American Dream verse in the studio because my engineer, John Scott, was also engineering for Jeezy on that album. And, you know, that was one of Jeezy's tracks. So Mm -hmm. I got to hear the raw, unedited vocals uh, when he played it for J. Cole, when it first came off the press, and I was just, I was taken back. You know, I, as even me as an artist, I felt like I got to step my game up mm-hmm. 10 levels because I'm listening to this verse with no reverb, ain't no effects, no beat behind it. It's just a verse, and it's that good. Yeah. It's that good. Listen, you know, man, that, that, that verse is one of the greatest verses I've ever heard, like in hip hop period. That's why I played it at the top of this program because, like, like bro, he, he didn't waste a bar, he didn't waste a single bar. And the, one. and the album I'm talking about is Born Center. That's the one. It was yeah, Born yeah, Center. I just found it too. Yeah. So, but yeah, but 2014 Forest Hill Drives, uh, For Your Eyes Only was mid. Kod was dope as hell to me, but it's just not a classic. But it was definitely a phenomenal album. Uh, uh, the Off Season Certified Classic, Fire from Top to Bottom. It's only one song on there that I skip. And that's a, a million a, a million dollars. I'm still on my grind. I hate that song. <laughs> I can't stand that song. But that but that album is uh, is a classic though. I might de- I might yeah. delete later. Outside of the disc was a solid project. Um, but like I said, I, I, I'm I'm ready for, I'm ready for the fall off. And like I said, the fall yeah. off with, with what he did with this with this uh, uh, apology and everything. This could be hinting at. Just that, just the fall off. It could be a marketing ploy, you know what I mean? But yeah, that that will be genius. I never even thought about that. Yeah, but one, but one thing I can tell you though is I'm definitely looking forward to, I'm definitely looking forward to uh, the fall off, and I and I'm really, really, really hoping that we get Muse a collab because they've been hitting at it for years. When they did the Black Friday joint. Where uh, Kendrick oh, yeah. Lamar rapped over uh, a J Cole beat, and J Cole rapped over Kendrick beat. Yeah, and, and they've been hitting that. They've been playing with us about this mixtape for years. So if we actually get this mixtape, that would be absolutely incredible. And like I said, I think that would be what salvages his legacy. You know what I mean? Because oh, yeah. I would love to hear. I would. I would love to hear them give us a song about how they got to this point and how they squashed the beef. That would be fire. I don't think we ever got that in hip hop before. Yeah. Have we got that in hip hop before? You got so. me thinking now. I don't think so. I could be wrong, but no, I don't think we ever got that. No, it's been somebody that squashed beef before. On wax though. Or talk about it on wax. No, because didn't because didn't Kanye and um and Drake squash their beef? They did a concert, but they didn't do it together. Yeah. And then Jacob and then right after the concert, Drake dissed him on his next album. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that was, yeah, that was wild. Yeah, he yeah. said the only reason he did it was because of his mob ties. He was talking about Jay Prince. Yeah, he said he did it for Jay Prince. That was it. So, like I said, I don't know if we ever gonna see that on wax, but I think it'd be fire if they just talked about it. If they rapped about it, you know what I mean? That'd give them something to rap about and ex- exactly how they respected each other, respect each other. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, I got a question real quick. Mm-hmm. So we've been talking about Cole and Kendrick. What is, uh, from y'all's perspective, what's the top song, y'all, y'all's favorite song from both artists? Hmm. That's, yeah, that's a tough. So I love Pride. I love Pride is the Devil. 
uh, of the off season. I love American Dream. Uh, man, he got so many songs that just fire to me, bro. Uh, oh, uh, what is it? Uh, a Tale of Two Cities. Mm. No role models and get off my dick. <laughs> I, I love, oh, yeah, I, I love that one. Um, let me see. God, man, he got so many, so many joints. I, I tell you real quick, yeah, I, I already told you. Who else? Who else? Name ten of them. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> gave, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I did. I did. You gotta I did. pick one. I gotta pick one. Damn, bro. God, he got so much good. I, if I had to pick one, and it's only because it's introspective and it relates to me, and it's uh, pride is the devil. If I had, to, okay. if I had to pick one, that because because him and little baby went crazy on that, but just the the what what he rapping about it relates very very closely to me, especially even yeah. even in this moment. So I'll have to go with Pride as Devil for me. I'm pretty sure he got better performances than that though, but to me it's Pride as Devil. Yeah, for me for me it'd be the climb back. Mm. It'd be the climb back, man. He That's he definitely one. hit on a on an emotional note for me, you know, I lost, I lost a close friend in high school, Quint, my brother knows about it, uh, but I couldn't go to the funeral, just too emotional. And so when he said, while passing the funeral procession, while holding my breath in the car, I thought, I was like, man, it just took me back to watching that funeral procession ride by. And I was like, man, this man done went inside my heart real quick and found a spot that I ain't even, I ain't even thought about in so many years. So the climb back would be that for J. Cole and then Kendrick, that XXX record. That one was okay, huge for so. me. One of my favorites. Right, that's, that's legit for me. Y'all already know Kendrick. The top track for me is definitely probably gonna be the part, the heart part two. And mm -hmm. um, uh, for Cole, hands down, ch uh, Chain and Day. Chain and Day is fire. That, yeah, yeah, Chain, chain and Day, yeah. my track from him. Like now, Grant, look, I'm a bass player, so the bass, the bass. Kind of did something for me because that baseline was crazy, but but yeah, he was talking on that one. Yeah, now he I'm, was definitely talking. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now I got I got to think of my favorite Kendrick one. It might be some newer. Mr. Morales and the Big Steppers had a lot of stuff that related to me on there, man. Um, actually, you know what? I'm, I'm gonna tell you. It is hood politics for me, Kendrick. Hood, hood politics. politics. Hood politics. Yeah. Which one? Which one was? Which one was hood politics? Here, I play for you right now. If it let me, it might not let me. Let me see. But like when the chemicals mix. I hate that I hate to cut that off so abruptly, but that, that, was, the, that was the one for me. Yo. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, that one that one that's up there, man. Yeah. I, I like the um what's what's the one he was talking about with his with, with his father? Or oh, uh uh fa uh Father Time. Oh, Mr. Father, Father Time, yeah. Yeah, Mr. Mr. yeah Father Time. Mm -hmm. And then um my auntie is a man now. Yeah, like man, he had he had some timeless stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, what was the name of that one? Auntie Diaries, the one that one. Auntie Diaries, yeah, yeah. yeah. I like th man th th that I can, so for Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, I can understand the, the the subject matter on that album was so heavy. I can understand why a lot of people uh, don't revisit that album. But but honestly, that album is is something else, man. Like just just the way he 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 it's like the way he mixed in the mental health aspect and a, it's like a therapy session he talking to Eckhart Tolle in that joint like all of it man and then y'all stepping y'all dancing around the the tough conversations all of that just it's, it's really indictment on culture and i love that album fam just like good kid mass city was it was indictment on culture you know what i mean so both of them is fine though yeah man yeah. yeah, that was yeah. That, but yeah, hill politics just for me personally. That's my personal. I'm pretty sure he got better performances, but that's my joint. <laughs> yeah, I always have to quantify that. Joint dropped so hard too. Yeah, I always have to quantify that because, like I said, it's just my personal favorite. What relates to me more? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. What about Drake? What's your favorite Drake joint? <laughs> Ooh, Drake. Got I want to ask. I'm serious. Like I know y'all might not be the biggest Drake fans. Like, but now I fuck. I fuck with Drake. But it, my first, the first thing I'm thinking is I got my eyes on you. Why you know what I'm saying? That song is so hard, bro. <laughs> that's hey man, that's fine. a classic that's though. A, yeah, it is. That's what I'm saying. Like that to me, that's his first, his second album, and and the album with his head in the clouds is his two certified classics. Yeah, he has. He, he got so much shit. I'm trying to think rap versus those in the spirit of hip hop. Um, I like that one on the last album where he was like, how you sound something with the top by just uh, fitting in? I will break net. He said, I will break heads and slit necks for my little man. 
Oh, yeah. I'm gonna tell you what you feel next, like the weather man. I was like, yo, this nigga spitting, spitting right now, boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He went crazy on that joint. Yeah, uh, I man. forgot what it was called. Yeah, but the, uh, the, our listeners know they savvy enough; they'll find it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> nah, so, I'm gonna tell you. I like, I like controller. Mm-hmm. Um, I like his verse on um, what was that Rihanna song? Work. Mm-hmm. Them, them your favorite, them your top joints from him. Uh, so you gotta, you gotta remember. When it come to Drake, I kind of get out of the whole lyrical thing, and I get more to like the quality of the music. Okay, you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. So it's like I know for work when he did certain things that he did in that song. Like I'm hearing harmonies in the background. I'm like, oh, he slid on that, you know. So yeah, that's where my mind goes. With I go to controller. I go to um. Mine was I when to say work. when that that was the title. When to say when was fine. When to say when, yeah. I love I love uh, Western ro- Western road flows. That's probably that's probably one of my favorite Drake joints. Uh, like I said, he got he got, but you, you, that uh, the song that you sang. Now I love that's that's probably one of my favorite songs. I can't think of the name of it right now. Well, hold on, we're going home. Yeah, just hold on, we're going home. That's my joint. But uh, and honestly, mm-hmm. my favorite Drake song. He didn't he didn't say a word on it. It was Bria's interlude. Oh yeah, that, that. <laughs> Bria's in the loop. I'm gonna say, say a word on that one. I'm gonna tell you this though, but whenever Drake gets to a city and he start looking at the, looking at his watch, them be the joints like this one. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, yeah. That's that's a fact, man. These be the joints. These are, these are all like real legends, man. They they gotta get they get their flowers. I'm gonna give them their flowers while they still here, man. Right, right. My top two songs from Drake, and don't judge me on this, man, because I'm ratchet. Mm-hmm. Rich baby daddy and Yubba's heartbreak. <laughs> Hey, listen, dog. Her loss got some joints on there, but it, yeah. it, it, that was on yeah. her loss, wasn't it? No, uh, uh, no. Rich baby daddy for all the dogs, and Yelba's heartbreak is on certified level boy. Certified level boy. Okay, okay. That's that's one yeah, of my yeah. least favorite albums of his. But yeah, we got to give him that. Give him that flowers, fam. Yeah, man. Yelba's heartbreak. But when I heard that, I was driving. I was driving from Atlanta to North Carolina, and I put Yelba's heartbreak on repeat and listened to that the whole six hour drive. Okay. Okay. But yeah, so well, th- th- there we have it. Like the big three. <laughs> I, 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 man, listen, bro. I had to have this conversation because that, that the algorithms is going crazy. But this is this. I mean, like I said, I'm, I think we got to some to some to some great talking points as far as how you know how and what the beef is and 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 how how it how it ended with at least between Drake and Kendrick. We, uh, I mean, uh, Kendrick and. Uh, j cole so we'll have we'll be we'll be waiting to see on the sidelines what happens in the future what y'all think about the future album that just dropped did you have y'all listened to it yet uh yeah i got two tracks in i got two tracks in and then i got a phone call man but it, it's it it shocked me to hear that intro mm-hmm. the intro just just took me by storm so i'm 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 very um interested to see where it's gonna go from here but it sounds good so far yeah that, that the intro was with the weekend right mm-hmm. yeah Q, you heard hey, it metro booming metro booming be booming, dog. Yeah, listen, I, I, I'm gonna tell you this. So I listened to the I listened to the first two songs like 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 Navelle, and somehow I ended up at the end, like in the in the middle. And I normally don't skip around when I listen to albums. I normally listen to them straight through. But I listened to the last seven songs, which is like the 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 the, the disc two of, of or the bonus tracks, whatever you want to call them. Them last seven mm-hmm. songs. Listen, bro. He turned he turned into to Miami LeBron. Them last seven songs are incredible. Do you hear me? Like, you. They are absolutely incredible, fam. Like you, you don't skip not one of those songs. Like it, even the song with Aside Rocky was seemed a little out of place, but I I love that song. But um, yeah, man. but but it's uh it's it's those last seven songs are phenomenal. I'm gonna have to go back and finish the rest of the project because it's, it's longer than the first one. Uh, but them last seven, if y'all if you don't do yourself a favor, go listen to them last seven at least. They fire. No, uh, I sure. listen to all twenty five tracks. Yeah, and 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 the one thing about it is, is they got a they got an interlude or or intro. I don't know how you want to take it with uh, Brilliant Idiots podcast talking about how it's really a big four and and future is, is the is the fourth one that ain't nobody talking about. And I would like to quantify that statement because I totally agree. Like I was I was a late adopter to future, but once I got on to him, I was like, nah, like this dude is incredible. <laughs> future is <incredible. laughs> future is incredible. I'm gonna like, <laughs> <I'll laughs> tell you the craziest I'm gonna tell you the craziest thing that I heard that was actually true and it was about future. And my brother actually said it to me, man. Cause I was talking about Beyonce and I was like, Man, they got the beehive out here, man. Like, dog, I don't know what it is Beyonce do for women, but like, bro, when Beyonce come on, they be in a trance, like Yeah. 
like they they treat it like Beyonce is literally their savior, and yeah. I don't understand it. Yeah, man, my brother looked me dead in my eyes. He said. He said they do that for the same reason we do it for future. <laughs> I, said, <laughs> I said, you know what? You got it. You right. Yeah. No, nah, we definitely yeah. stand for future. For yeah. Sure. yeah. Listen, listen, anytime uh March Madness come on, I go crazy. That that or code code in crazy. <laughs> then my joint. March Madness. But March Madness, yeah. like yeah, that that that's that could be a soundtrack to my life. <laughs> I, love that job. I, I can't I can't be in no professional situation in March Madness. Come on, and I keep my job. You said what? <laughs> you was, said, was, I said, said it one more time. I said, I said I cannot be in any professional situation <laughs> if I'm in any professional capacity. And March Madness, come on, I'm losing my job. <laughs> that is hysterical. Hey, listen, because yeah, it's, it's just true, straight up. Yeah, no, but hey, that, hey, that's a fact. That joint go crazy. Um, yeah. man, but listen, y'all got anything else to add to the subject? Hey, no, nah, man, other than, hey, I appreciate this, man. You got a real good platform, dog. I'm glad to be here, man. I appreciate it. Hey, listen, bro, anytime you, anytime you want to come on, uh, like I said, you're more than welcome to come back. Just let me know. Uh, and, and, and that's on any topic. I brought y'all on for the music conversations because y'all come from a music inclined, a musically inclined family. Y'all both play instrument. You play an instrument. Your brother is an incredible artist. Like, I, I don't know if Navelle actually plays any instruments now. He can, he might have been learning. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. I always did play a little instruments. It just ain't the popular kind. It ain't you know, the I'm, like three, I'm like three stacks. I might be running around in Tokyo with some shit. Right, right, right. <laughs> that, that, that's, a, that, that's a fact. But um, but listen, man. Like, no, I had to have y'all on for this conversation because I think it ain't it ain't two better people to have this, that that conversation with. And I hope the listeners enjoyed this and got and took something away from it. Um, and not so mad at J. Cole at the end of the day because, uh, I, I, like I said, I'm giving this brother his flowers, especially after finding out what he did down there in North Carolina with Dreamville Fest and employing those uh, those black contractors. That's just amazing in itself and just speaks to the type of person that he is. For sure, man. So. Thank thank you again for having us on, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, this Unlabeled Shit is the future, man. Mm-hmm. For everybody who just tuning in, this Unlabeled Shit the future is taking over the world. So, goddamn, <laughs> tune in. Every time. Yeah, and like, comment, and subscribe and go on Apple Podcasts, download my shit and and, uh, and rate it. <laughs> but yeah, we yeah, we taking over, man. I appreciate y'all uh, brothers for joining me as well. And listeners, on that note, we'll see y'all next week with another episode of Unlabeled the Podcast. Peace. Thank you.